Hello again folks, what's this I hear you ask? Well, it's got neat handwriting, a little cute LED sticker. I really shouldn't do what play on this channel. It's David Watts' Binary Crap Clock Kit. It arrived yesterday, uh, kit number 15 of 22. And I thought in this video we'd start the build of it. Um, I think I'll do this in two parts. Um, but yeah, we'll go through the kit and do a little bit, probably the surface mount stuff in this video. So in the package, hopefully you can see that, we've got the uh, circuit layout, you know, the, where the components go, etc., and the values. Uh, and on the back, we get the schematics. And I got a little note from David. You were, the f you were this venture first order. I think that's what it says. Well freaking done, all the best, David. And there's his uh, Chinglish instructions. I uh, won't spoil the surprise if you've bought this kit. Um, just use Google Translate app and it'll, it'll show you what it says. It's quite funny. Uh, Dave uh, was selling these on Tindy. I think he sold out, um, well, I think it was 22 boards he sold out initially in, in quite a short space of time. He has ordered an additional uh, 16 boards. However, there are, I think, nearly 40 people, if not more, uh, with this kit on their waiting list. So if he does upload it, oh, sorry, I should say, if you do want this kit, get on that 10 day waiting list. And as soon as it comes online, buy it because he's not going to make any more after this, I don't believe. However, he's a nice chap and he has made the hardware open hardware. So uh, he's kindly provided the Gerber files, etc. So if you are desperate to get this and you don't manage to get one from Tindy, you can get the board fabricated uh, yourself. So without further ado, let's open up and have a little gander at it. Comes this little really difficult to get into static shielded bag. I will just tip it all out actually. Make sure there's nothing in there. Nope. Um, so we get some cute stickers. I don't know, is that Dave's logo? I'm not sure if he got these made up or whether he's bought them somewhere. Um, but yeah, they're quite cool. I'll stick them on something. Um, all the components, header pins, um, LEDs, push buttons, all your resistors and capacitors. Uh, there's a little crystal in there. Uh, some diodes, all the CMOS uh, ICs, and here's a nice uh, PCB. It looks like it came from Oshpark, um, not OSH Park, I don't know how you say it. Uh, Oshpark, but there we go. CMOS BCD Crap Clock, uh, and that's David's channel. Of course, if you haven't seen his channel, I have linked to it down below. So I would recommend you go and have a look, and you can actually see the process he went through to uh, you know, design and get this to the, the stage that it could be sent out to punters like myself. Um, yeah, it's about 50-50 through hole and surface mount. We've got nine uh, surface mount dual line packages, seven on this side and two on the other, and uh, quite a few resistors for the, the LEDs uh, and a few down here. Uh, and the rest of it's pretty much through hole. Um, so yeah, I thought we'll just crack on in and get it built, shall we? So, I haven't actually thought about how I'm going to do this, if I'm being totally honest. Um, am I going to do it with solder paste, or am I going to do it with a soldering iron? Um, I think I'll do it with a soldering iron, just for a change. I'm always using solder paste uh, these days. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll use the good old soldering iron. I've got a, quite a large tip on here, but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it will cause us any problems. Right, right, yeah, enough rambling. Let's crack on. So, what are these? There's uh, six of these. So these are uh, the 4510. So let's just get this uh, circuit layout here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So from left to right on the bottom, that is our um, that's our 64510Ds. So we'll go ahead and get those fired on the board. I'll use this fine solder I've got here, a reasonably fine solder. And what we'll do, if I can do this without getting my head in the camera, let's zoom in slightly and focus it. I know that picture is a little bit noisy, but it's the best I can do, I'm afraid. And what we'll do is we'll just tin up uh, one of the... Um, pads on each of these uh, chips 
This is really awkward to do. At this angle. I will open these up. So on the, the circuit diagram, you can see that the notch is to the... Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah, bottom, 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 bottom. Right, so those are all with a notch towards the bottom. Let's see the silk screen. Has it got that one? Yeah, it has done just down there, I think. Yeah, the notch is on there. So, oops. Here are said 45 tens. I'll get that to focus. And you can see there's a dot at the bottom here. So that is essentially where the notch is going to be. So what we'll do is we'll lift that in, uh, lift those in one at a time. Now there is a couple of loose uh, ICs in there, so I'll just make sure that this is the one that I just dropped this moment ago. 4510, yeah. Dot is round the other way. Oops. And what we'll do is we'll just bring that in, reflow that bit that we just put on there a second ago. And have a look. Oh, not bad for a first attempt. Okay. I'm getting that back into shot. And all we're going to do now is just gently manoeuvre it, make sure it's aligned. And we'll turn up the other leg. Or the opposite, uh, diagonally opposite leg. And then we'll just... Uh, should we try some drag soldering? I don't, is that going to go? Is that going to end up in tears? Let's try drag soldering. So I'm going to use uh, this uh, flux, the, the stuff that comes in a little syringe. I've not done uh, drag soldering for quite some time, so this may be interesting. Let me put the iron down before I melt something. And all I'm going to do is. Squeeze a little bit of flux on there, or well, quite a lot. I will clean this up, don't worry. Like so. Nice clean uh, tip there. I will put a, a small amount of solder on the, the tip, like so. And then I'll hold this actually, because it's only, it's attached to it. And I'll just put on that and then drag down. A couple of times, and if we look at that, hopefully there should be no shots. Let's just uh, tap to focus, and there we go. Some nice fillets in there, as you can see, no shots, and that should be good to go. We'll just do the same on the opposite side. So again, we've got enough flux on there. Clean the iron. A little touch of solder, not too much. Start at the top. Drag it down a couple of times if you wish. And again, nicely soldered. Yeah, no problems at all there. Once you've done that, clearly you're going to want to clean any sort of residue off. I'm just using, well, it's a huge bottle of isopropyl alcohol. And I've just got a, a natural bristle brush here. And just uh, dip that in there and don't be afraid of using too much alcohol it's not going to cause you any problems at all uh, clearly we're going to allow it to dry and uh, if needs be we can use a lint-free cloth to, to mop up any final residue but if we look at it now as you can see nicely so the joints there's going to be zero problems with that so what I'll do now is I will continue to pop these ICs on and uh, once I get back to you, um, we'll look at where we're going to go next. So, catch you in just a moment. Okay, so that's soldered up really nicely actually and I can say hand on heart out of all those uh, seven ICs that I've just put on, I had two shots across uh, a couple of them and that was uh, just plenty of flux, uh, a clean eye and just uh, touch the shot and it, it just disappears, really nice uh, nice job I think. Okay folks, um, so in terms of the um, surface mount resistors I'm going to as you can probably see I'm going to hot air reflow these I've applied a tiny amount of uh, paste to each of the pads and then we're just going to populate the boards uh, something you need to be aware of here uh, down at the bottom and if I bring in the 
a circuit layout here you can see that this uh, pair down the bottom the 6.8 meg and the 330k they are aligned vertically you, you know the up down if that makes sense where the rest of them are uh, well a lot of them are horizontal if that makes sense so just be careful orientation because where the pads are it could be quite easy to get those confused so let's get those on um we'll put our 6.8 megaton first uh, i've just got them in these tweezers here and where's this 6.8 so we'll just chuck that on there like so our other 6.8 is going here Hopefully you get this in camera, like so. We've got a 330K, which is going to go here. Uh, some 10Ks down the bottom here. Like so, there's another 10k just here. So we'll chuck that on there. And another one on the right hand side. So the 330s, 330k and the 6.8, I think there was one spare of each of those. Uh, 10k is just enough to do the, do the board. And yeah, there's a couple of spare 330Ks. Um, next thing to do is populate all these 470K, uh, 470 ohm, I should say, uh, resistors uh, uh, to, to go on the, the LED. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I'll get those on and then we'll reflow it. So bear with me just a moment. Right, that's us all populated. Let's uh, reflow it. I've mentioned before, when it comes to surface mount soldering and applying uh, solder paste, less is very much more um you don't need a lot if you do put a lot on there it's just gonna it's just gonna bubble up and cause your components to lift off the board so just the tiniest amount um you know in terms of thickness probably a third of a millimeter or a half a millimeter something like that really in fact yeah a third of a millimeter is probably ideal um yeah not a lot is what i'm trying to say so we'll just bring this up to temperature and then we'll uh as always, in gentle circular movement over the components, not focusing the heat in any one area for any great length of time. Just uh, get that air flowing over. You want quite a low um, fan setting on this because you don't want to be blowing your components all over the place. And we'll just do this, uh, just do this corner down here, I'll show you it, and then I'll uh, do the rest of it. So that's it, start to go. Those are all being dragged into alignment. And that's a nice job. So, if I lift it up and show you, you'll see that our surface mount resistors down the bottom, uh, nice, nice and attached there. And, and if I'm being totally honest, they're critical of myself. I've probably got too much solder paste on there, um, but they are flat to the board and that's good enough for me. So, yeah, again, I'll pause the video and uh, do the rest of these and then come back to you. Right, there's uh, all the resistors on, um, nice and flat to the board as you can see, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, there's not a lot left to do, shall I just finish it off rather than make it two videos? Um, I think I probably will. So, next thing we're going to do is, oh, we'll do, yeah, we'll do all the through hole stuff, the diodes, the lower profile stuff, get the crystal on there. Um, and then we'll, we'll we'll do the LEDs and such like. So let's crack on with that. I'll take it out the boards here, or the holder, I should say. Got resistors here. And uh, do you know what? I'll just uh, I'll just snip these out of the paper, like so. And of course, the line on the component marries up with the the line on the left here, as you can see. And we'll just bend those. And pop them through, like so. And like so. And 
and like so and last one Just like that. Sound like Tommy Cooper there, don't I? For those of you who are old enough to remember Tommy Cooper. Okay, dokes. So just bend the leads over like so. And we'll solder them up. I will put these uh, last two components on, last two uh, packages on, probably at the very end. Difficult to get in here. And last one here. There we go. We'll give those a little trim. And that's our diodes in place. So, rather than bore you with uh, the rest of the through hole stuff, I will populate all the LEDs, uh, the caps, etc. And then we'll come back to you and finish it off in just a moment. See you in a second. Right, we're nearly in the, uh, well, we're in the final stages of construction. So only a couple of things to put on now. That's the electrolytic cap. So uh, negative or the cathode to the top, uh, positive to the bottom. We'll pop that in there like so. I may reposition this to the rear at some point. Um, we also got to go in that way, nothing. So, right, okay. Rambling on. As per. So, on take, there you go. Cut the leads off that. We will put the header in for power. There's <clears throat> enough on there just to, to hold it. Oh, that clearly wasn't enough to hold it. No, that's not working. Let's just pop that down there like so. Right, okay, so we'll just reflow that and push it through the board. Make sure it's uh, lined up with the other one. Of course, I'm just being semi perfectionist here. <laughs> of course, it doesn't matter as long as the electrical connection is good, that's all that matters, I suppose. Right, apply a little bit more solder on there. And I think the only thing left to go on here is the reset switch. Now the reset, reset switch is mounted on the back so you actually solder it from the, the front so I tend to just bend these pins over they're a little bit deformed and just a little bit, little bit squashed in the post but not to worry uh, bend them over and they'll, they'll stay in there quite the thing. And the last one, and there we have it. Okay, so that is our binary crap clock kit, uh, fully constructed by the looks of it. So we'll give it a quick, as you can see, it's a bit of flux here and there. You can see where I uh, drag solder those, there's quite a lot of flux. So again, we will just uh, get plenty of alcohol on there. 
give it a good old clean. And, you know, like I said before, you can, you can be quite liberal. Try not to get it on the switch, though. That might not help. So I will totally blame that if it doesn't work. Yeah, I've got quite a lot of alcohol on there. Right, um, grab some lint-free cloth and just uh, blot that up. Try and get those switches first, just in case it leaks in. We'll blot it off. Like so. And I'll just, uh, off camera here, hold it up to my heater and I just uh, evaporate the rest of that alcohol off. And uh, that will be, should resolve any issues or potential issues. Okay, so there we go. That's it all dried off. Nice and clean by the looks of it. And now is the moment of truth, of course. So I'll wipe up this alcohol here. We do have a couple of jumpers to go on the back, these little extended jumpers, and uh, those are going to go uh, on the back. So on the back here you've got manual, and that allows you to use the, the buttons on the front to, to cycle through uh, the the display, if you like. And we've got a clock, a one hertz clock pulse. And I think David said you can actually connect a GPS uh, one hertz, you know, get a, a cheap GPS module and use the one hertz uh, clock pulse to, to cycle this and of course it's going to be more accurate than the, the little uh, crystal that's on here. The other uh, header we've got here is the GPS, uh, sorry, LED enable. So we'll pop that on just now and uh, we'll get some power. So um, what have I got knocking around that we can use? Um, we'll just use a couple of these uh, Dupod connectors, that's going to be the easiest thing to do, I think. Male to female, so we'll use uh, white as the 5 volts and black as ground, because that kind of makes sense. Now this takes uh, 5 volt input. I'm going to get on there. So I'll use my bench supply here. Let's uh, knock the current down a bit. And then we shall plug it in. So I'll put it on manual initially. In fact, you know, we'll use the, the one hertz pulse first. Black to black, red to white. Let's turn the output on and see if it works. And it does. So basically you've got three segments if you like. You've got hours, minutes and seconds. One, two, four and eight. So um, there we go. So that oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be too heavy. Uh, I can't talk in uh, calculate it at the same time. But yeah, so depending on what LEDs are, are illuminated. So that is 41, 44, 45, 46... You know, yeah, so whatever row it's on, whatever you calculate the total. So for this one here, this is 22, okay? Is that right? I think. <laughs> but you can um, change this, so that's a one hertz pulse, so it's going to change every one second. And if I put it on manual, you can use, you've got a couple of things. So you've got, what is it, uh, 30, 32 hertz. So that's going to change 32 times a second. And you've got 256 hertz. And that is clearly super fast. And you can see it's cycling through. Um, and once it gets up to sort of 59, essentially, this should change. And as you can see, that one's just come on there. So it is working. Uh, we'll take a little bit of playing around to get it set up. Uh, clearly, you're going to put it on the, the one hertz one hertz, one time a second, it's going to change, uh, cycle it through, in fact, I don't know if you can actually cycle it through on here, um, but yeah, you, you're going to essentially sync it up to your, your your normal clock, and then once you've worked out how to do it, you know, uh, it'll be 
yeah, match it up to your normal clock, and once it's uh, all set, you should be it should be good to go. I don't know what the accuracy of this is, you know, in terms of how how much drift it's got over time. Let's see if you're concerned about that, you know, stick a one hertz GPS pulse into this and it's gonna keep it super accurate. You know, if it's accurate enough to, to run banking systems and stuff like that, it's pretty much gonna be accurate enough to run uh, Dave's uh, crap clock. So there we go, uh, quite a long video. Uh, in hindsight, I should have probably split it into two, but never mind. Um, there it is, successful build, absolutely no dramas with it at all. Nice little kit. Uh, I gave you all the details before. The link is down below uh, for Tindy and, of course, uh, Dave's channel, as well as uh, a few other uh, YouTubers that I uh, like to watch. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And until next time, um, oh, in fact, if you haven't already done so, you'd like to do so, click on my fat head here. I'm zoomed in. That was difficult. Um, but, yeah, as always, take care of yourselves and all the best.